I'm Carmen, I'm a TA at an SEN secondary. So last year, I wasn't personally mandated to strike, but me and multiple other support staff at our school um, refused to cross the picket line on all the strike days. <laughs> what I learned from refusing to cross the picket line, uh, the conditions that made it possible for me and my school, and why I think now is the moment for us to be taking these kind of actions. Um, so I just want to give a bit of background to explain what it took for me to be at a stage where I was ready to go on strike. Um, because, you know, if we want to win these upcoming strikes, hopefully we'll go on strike, um, especially, you know, we need to understand how people feel confident and empowered to be able to do so. So, I'm someone who is already highly politicised, but I remember when the strike days were announced, I was feeling pretty nervous, I was feeling conflicted. You know, I knew if I went in, I would be used to undermine the strike and I'd be used to keep the school running smoothly. But, so I obviously didn't, I didn't want to go in. Um, but I was scared of getting disciplined or facing some kind of repercussion because I personally had been balloted. Um, and I received as well conflicting advice from different people on the left um, about what to do. So I had a bit of a penny drop moment uh, following a conversation with two of my comrades and one of whom was a teacher. And I just sort of had a bit of a moment where I was like, there is no way I can cross the line like as a communist. Um, <laughs> moment where I had to put all these political thoughts into action basically and I'm just mentioning this because I want to emphasize that even as someone who knew the political importance of the strike in order to feel sort of sure that I wanted to take action I needed to be supported in making that decision and not making the decision by myself so you know at this point I was still scared because I wasn't I hadn't spoken to other sports staff in my school yet and um, but I spoke to my ref at my school, he's really great, and I said, and he's a teacher, and he, he organised a meeting for everyone, and invited everyone along, and asked me to share in the meeting why I had decided to not cross the picket line. So, the meeting we had, that was a key moment for the organisation of support staff. So once I shared sort of why I wasn't going to cross the picket line, why I didn't want to be used to undermine the strikes, you know, how our future work and conditions depended on the outcome of the strike but also ultimately getting across that now is the moment when the government are trying to make it harder for us to strike now is when we have to take that risk and take action so so many support staff after the meeting had conversations with each other they were like coming up to me and there was a real sense of like collective excitement and joy because you know as support staff we have very little autonomy over our work. We basically get, we get told what to do all the time. So it was nice to be able to take back a bit of control and just go, you know, we're gonna go on, we're gonna stand on the picket lines in solidarity with the teachers, but also for ourselves, for our, you know, our pay, like our conditions, our right to strike. And you know, if the teachers lost the strike, it's our jobs on the line as well, because, one of the demands of the strike was a fully funded pay rise from the government and not out of the school's budget. So, you know, whose jobs are they going to cut first? We, we needed, it wasn't just about the te you know, teachers winning a pay rise, it was for all of us. Um, so I think another thing worth mentioning is that the law around going on strike, you know, when you're not mandated, it's pretty vague. It's technically illegal to take strike action when not mandated, but you are able to decide not to cross the picket line. Um, so basically, it's very confusing because I looked this up, it's very confusing, but if you find it confusing, your boss finds it confusing as well. Um, <laughs> so just use that to your advantage. Like, what we did, I mean, we had my rep stated an all-staff briefing in front of all the leadership team very confidently, like, we had an absolute right to not cross the picket line. You know, they believe, obviously, they're like, oh, okay. Um, so he made it very clear that we had the unions backing and it allowed people to not feel worried about the repercussions and encouraged more support staff to be on, if, like, on board. So there was like enough of us now that it didn't feel scary. So having a physical picket line helped, um, you know, convincing TAs walking in. I remember a TA that took two buses to get in and then just went straight back home when she saw the picket line. So, you know, I think the key takeaways are like, if people go on, you know, for people to go on strike and decide to not cross a picket line, it's essential for us to understand 
what it takes for people to feel empowered to take action. And despite it feeling scary, it is possible. Like, they don't want to get rid of TAs. They have a recruitment crisis. They're not going to do anything. So it can feel scary if you're worried about your job because it's your job. But, you know, and solidarity between different workers is just so essential for a successful strike. Like, there's more TAs than teachers at my school. Like, organising support staff at the school could be a make or break whether a school like, stays open or closes. So, you know, they want to isolate us, but we just need to stand together, stand together on the picket line. There's, like, no other feeling like it, really, but, yeah.